so now students we will just go for second part of uh, kepler's law second part of centri central force problem and kepler's law so first part we have just seen what is property of uh, my central force and what is concept of v effective now you have one more very interesting differential equation you should remember this and this will be minus j square u square upon m and you have to go for d square u upon d theta square plus u is equal to f 1 by u where u is equal to 1 by r so this is one of the very important differential equation suppose in a central force problem you have knowledge of force then using this differential equation you can solve u and then you can write the equation of orbit and this is nothing but the differential equation of orbit a differential equation of orbit and the same time sometime what you have you have equation of orbit and you can see that how your force can be worked so this is very important for your central force problem in general you have to only work for potential vr is equal to minus k by r which is actually kepler's problem so for the kepler's problem we can solve this this thing in a very nice manner and your final answer will be l upon r is equal to 1 plus e cos theta where l is and this is nothing but the equation of conics l is nothing but j square upon mk and e is our eccentricity and e is, and this is known as lattice rectum lattice rectum and e is our eccentricity and for this particular v effective for this particular potential for the given value of j j is angular momentum we have v effective and this v effective has very nice plot and this is v effective versus r and for this value of energy you have circular orbit and for this value of energy if you have negative energy but more than e naught you have elliptical orbit and you have also learned that this for energy e is equal to zero you have parabolic orbit and for this particular value you have hyperbolic orbit and we have also relationship between in eccentricity and energy and for relationship between eccentricity and energy we can easily solve this thing and we have done this thing in our class so here we have relationship between eccentricity and energy and this value is 1 plus 2 e j square upon mk square and for that you can easily see that for circular orbit e is equal to 0 and your energy e is equal to minus mk square upon 2j square for the elliptical orbit you have any negative energy and this is your positive energy and here eccentricity is between 0 to 1 and for parabolic orbit eccentricity is equal to 1 and here eccentricity is greater than 1 as well as energy is greater than 0 so this is all the concept you have to learn in a very nice manner because most of the question most of the question is coming in your exam for this potential and you have to learn all this concept very carefully so these are the main part of central force problem now you have to special give a special focus to your elliptical orbit that is kepler's three law so let's go for what is kepler's three law and what in which part you have to focus in very efficient manner so let's go for kepler's three law so here <clears throat> so kepler's there are three law for the kepler's so we have kepler's three law so first law will tell you just 
the particle or you can just talk about sun and earth system here is your sun and here is your earth and this is moving in a elliptical orbit and sun is at one the of the eccentricity sorry one of this particular focus so that is a e and zero is the point and here is earth and this is my r dot and this is my r theta dot so this is your earth and which is mass of let's say this mass is m and this angle is theta so for and you can just work out for this thing l by r is equal to 1 plus e cos theta and here e is between 0 to 1 and you can have this is your r minimum so r minimum is what a 1 minus e and r maximum this is your r maximum so you can use a 1 plus e what is beautiful part of r minimum and r maximum hence our angular momentum is conserved then we can use this condition so m r minimum v maximum is equal to m r maximum v minimum and hence these two points are turning points then at these two points at r minimum and r maximum r dot is equal to zero because we are talking about this sort of potential this is my v effective versus r and this is my r minimum and this is my r maximum so this is your first law the all the concept in first law but most important thing is that energy in a elliptical orbit is equal to minus k upon r minimum plus r maximum and in this case this energy is equal to minus k upon 2a so this is your first law second law is all about very simple thing that aerial velocity is conserved you can take two area and you will find if that this is your da upon dt1 dt1 is the time just so that it shifts from here to here and here we can have da2 upon dt2 the time where it is shift from here to here and from the this is your so second law is just about da1 upon dt1 is equal to da2 upon dt2 is equal to j upon 2n you can easily prove this thing so this is your second law this is your first law all this story we have done and now you can go for third law the third law is very interesting and this will be the third law will tell you t square is proportional to a cube where a is the semi major axis of this particular orbit so these are the thing most of the question most of the question will come on to this particular concept t square is proportional to a cube sometime they will give this problem in term of angular frequency sometime they will give this problem in term of time period so you should remember this in nothing but time period so this is all about kepler's law only this part you have to focus and you have to see and please do all this derivation all this derivation is very important because sometime if you do the derivation you can use the concept very nicely so these points you have to focus for the kepler's all three law and above than this you have to just learn one more thing that is basically known as virial theorem so let's try to learn what is virial theorem this is very simple thing you have to just apply the formula part and if you are using this thing for the kepler's problem means any potential any potential which is proportional to minus 1 by r you can use this particular thing so you can use it in the hydrogen atom also and you can also use it for the sun and earth system and more and after then sometime you have to if you are using two body problem then you can also go for concept of reduced mass and reduced mass is nothing but m1 m2 upon m1 
plus m2 and you can see that if you are taking the concept of reduced mass, then center of mass will moving with the constant uh, velocity and uh, the, the linear momentum of center of mass is constant. And you can work on the reference frame with the center of mass that two body will appear as one body and whose reduced mass is this one. So you can use this reduced mass also into the hydrogen atom. When we will go into this particular modern physics, we will discuss how this reduced mass will come into picture. And now <clears throat> the last part of this uh, central force is Virial theorem. So let's go for Virial theorem. So if you have any potential and this potential is something like a r n plus one. And this is some coefficient, a is some constant. So potential is r n plus one. Then what you have, you have kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is equal to n plus one by two average of potential energy. So average of kinetic energy will be n plus one by two average of potential energy. And similarly, you can use this concept for all different type of potential. For example, Vr is equal to minus k by r. And here we can have n plus 1 is equal to minus 1. Then we can easily see that kinetic energy is equal to minus 1 by 2 potential energy. So this is one of the very favorite question for your exam. And you can directly use this particular theorem known as Virial theorem. So this is this two videos, central force part one and central force part two is more than enough that you should focus on that part and just try to solve previous year problem associated to this thing. Use this formula very efficiently and try to focus all these points always. You will see that you can make all the question correct. Thank you.